In this video, you're going to learn more about the history pane in ArcGIS Pro. The history pane is basically a log of all the geoprocessing tools that you've run inside of a specific project in ArcGIS Pro over time. So essentially, anytime you run a geoprocessing tool, um, it, that information is going to be logged and it will be uh, available to you through the history pane. The first thing we'll do is just show you how to bring up the history pane. Uh, this can be done from the analysis tab in ArcGIS Pro. And you can see I already have a project loaded. This is simply called the Chapter 1 project. And uh, of course, it's got some content, some maps here, and database connections, and a few other things. Uh, but to access the history tab or history pane, you'll go to the analysis tab. And then on the far left hand side, there's a button called history. And so if you click the history button, that'll display the history pane. What you're going to see in the history pane is a listing of all the geoprocessing tools that you have run in the past for this particular project. So what you're seeing now, you know, each of these entries is one tool, uh, one geoprocessing tool that I've run at some point in the past for this particular project, whatever that project happens to be. Uh, now, if you, you know, if it's a fairly new project, you, uh, you may not have run any geoprocessing tools. So, you know, it's possible that this list could be empty you know, with a new project or with a project that you just simply haven't run any geoprocessing tools for in the past. Uh, but each of these entries is a geoprocessing tool that's run in the past. If you mouse over any of the entries in the history pane, what you'll see is a new window that pops up with additional information about that tool. Uh, date information, like when the tool was run, uh, when it was completed, the elapsed time, the parameters that were input, for the tool, uh, any environment settings you may have defined, any messaging that may have gone on. Messaging, you know, a lot of times it's just informational messaging, but there's also warnings and errors that may have popped up as well. So anytime you mouse over any of these in individual entries, you'll see this little window that pops up. And that just gives you more information about the last time that, that tool was run. Uh, of course, you'll get the name of the tool, in this case, export features. You can see I've run the merge tool, select by location. So I've run a number of different geoprocessing tools in the past. There's date information, date and time information here that will tell you the last date and time that that tool was, was executed. If you see a green check, that indicates that that tool executed successfully. Uh, if it did not execute successfully, you'll see a red X that pops up instead of the green uh, checkbox. Um, all right, so that's, and there's two buttons here on that geoprocessing pane. Uh, the default is gonna be the tool history. Uh, there's also, um, a button here for scheduled tools. I don't have any tools that are currently scheduled to run. This would be any tools that you have scheduled to run at some point in the future. So those could be listed here as well. Most of the time you're gonna be working from geo geoprocessing uh, history there. Uh, this is searchable, so you can search the history pane as well. So if you search for a specific tool, and this is useful, you know, as, you, as your projects start to age and you run more and more geoprocessing tools, this list of course is gonna get uh, Going to get more and more lengthy and so sometimes it's easier you know as you start building up more and more tools that have run in the past sometimes you, you're searching for a specific tool uh, that search function allows you to, to search for uh, tools that you've run in the past there's also a filtering function here that allows you to filter by local or portal geoprocessing tools uh, you can also filter by status uh, including in progress completed or failed uh, you can sort as well. By, the default is going to be by start time in descending order. This just allows you to sort what you see in the history pane, uh, either by start time, which is the default, by name, or by status in either ascending or descending order. The little red X allows you to remove an item from the history pane uh, should you need to do so. Uh, and then from there, um, you can right click any of the available uh, tools. So if I right click, you're going to get a context pane that pops up. And that little context menu gives you additional functionality. So you can open the tool. If you open the tool, what that will do is present you with the interface for that geoprocessing tool. And it will automatically load any the parameters that were used the last time you ran the geoprocessing tool. Or, or for this particular uh, tool run, these are the parameters that were used for that particular tool. Um, and, uh, you know, if you get a red exclamation or red X mark here, that just indicates that, uh, you know, there's, there's an error here and you're going to need to change that in some way uh, to remove that error. At other times, you'll get warning messages when you're 
you know, for example, when you're overriding a data set that already exists, right? so you might want to change that to, to something different uh, or not. So what you're seeing here is just a listing of all the parameters for that particular run of this particular field processing tool. Uh, and then you can re-execute the tool if you need to uh, or make changes and re-execute. Other things you can do from the context menu, you can rerun it, right? So if you just want to rerun that tool, the geoprocessing tool with the same parameters, you could just click run. You can also add the tool to a model. So if you're using Model Builder to build up some type of model, you might want to add a tool uh, with specific parameters already defined to that model. Uh, of course, you can add it to your history of favorites. You can share as a geoprocessing package. You've got multiple Python options here that allow you to either copy this Python command, send it to the Python window for execution. You can send to a notebook, which is just an alternative way of executing Python code, or you can save it as a, just a default Python script. So multiple Python options here that allow you to um, interact with different Python environments and be able to execute that tool as, as a Python script or as a you know, just a small uh, blurb of Python code as well. And of course, you can access help for the tool or remove the tool if you need to. So uh, again, the history tool, very useful tool, and I think an underutilized tool for a lot of people. Um, but again, what you're seeing here is a listing of all the geoprocessing tools that you've run in this project in the past. Uh, so it makes it very easy, uh, should you need to, to be able to go back and rerun those tools or to rerun those tools with slightly altered parameters. Uh, just makes you more efficient in your in your workflows for accomplishing your DIS tasks. All right, that's all I wanted to discuss today. Appreciate you joining me, and uh, hope you'll join me on a future.